Today I went to the supermarket. I'm scared to go because of the embarrassment. I mean, they see you coming and say, oh, here he comes. Another mad stockpiler, which I'm not. And to prove I'm not, I don't buy any essentials. I only buy luxuries, which means I have nothing in the cupboards except for pate and chocolate covered almonds, which isn't a great diet. But today I went to the supermarket and I was appalled by what I saw. You hear things, people tell you things, people claim they have seen things, but then you go and you see it with your own eyes. Mr. Kipling Angel Slices, 30% less sugar. Uh, why? Is this what we've been reduced to? I ask you. I mean, I'll still eat them, obviously. We're in a global crisis, but I'm not going to be happy about it. You're watching a recipe for nightmares. Coronavirus edition! There's no need to panic. Yes, this is the show where I, horror author John McNee, explore the recipes of Vincent Price, horror icon, from his famous cookbook, A Treasury of Great Recipes. Today is a very special episode because, like a lot of other people, I am in quarantine. Lovely quarantine. I was planning to have a very special guest and to ensure that that still happens, I've taken some extraordinary measures. So ladies and gentlemen, I want you to welcome to the show my friend and possibly yours, Amal Palin. Hi, I'm Amal. Uh, I'm currently in isolation slash quarantine. I'm drinking my isolation cocktail. Yeah, what do you got? Hot lemon and ginger. <laughs> my, how times have changed. <laughs> I've been trying to be on the show for a while, but here we are, in a first for the show. Yeah. I was almost gonna be a groundbreaker. So Amal, do you want to tell the folks at home what today's recipe is? Yes, John. Today's recipe is tea scones. That's right, we are British, so we will get through this crisis the way our people have gotten through so many crises before. With tea and scones. And queuing. And queuing. And stockpiling. Yeah. And making sure your neighbour doesn't have enough food to eat. So, for coronavirus pandemic quarantine tea scones, we require... Flour, salt, baking powder, butter, shortening, sugar, egg, milk, sultana raisins. All the things it's most difficult to find at the shops at the moment. Can get milk, can get eggs. <laughs> Step one, preheat oven to 425 degrees Fahrenheit or 220 degrees Celsius. John, I have already done that. You, you, you're weird. <laughs> Step two, in a mixing bowl, combine two cups of plain flour. I don't have any cups. No, it's like um, 250 grams. Follow that up with two and a half teaspoons of salt. Oh, this is slow. It was it was half a teaspoon of salt. Amal. What? It was half a teaspoon of salt. <laughs> Step two and a half. Dig your excess salt out of your mixture. <laughs> you can see it. You can see you can see what's flour and what's salt. It's easy. Hang on, and I'll be back in a, a couple of hours once I've finished picking those grains. Two and a half teaspoons of baking powder. Hey, remember when we used to be outside? No. So for step three, we need uh, some shortening. Uh, so we're gonna use stork margarine because we don't know what shortening is. Oh, I'm using something called Trex. Trex. Amazing you could find Trex in the shop with the current panic buying crisis going on. <laughs> yeah, it was actually in the space earmarked for uh, toilet roll. We need roughly a third of a cup and how much is a third of a cup? It's about that much. It's all right, John, I've actually made my own notes because I suspected this might happen and I believe it to be 75 grams. That's way more than I thought. Just putting my treks in. What do you think you'll uh, end up doing with the rest of your treks when you finish this recipe? I actually shouldn't say. You ready to add half a cup of sultana raisins? And half a cup is about 70 grams, 68 grams. I thought a third of a cup, you just said a third of a cup was 75 grams. So I did, so I did, so I did. But I have put 68 grams. Okay, I think we're way off. <laughs> so using your pastry blender, mix all that in. Pastry blender. Exactly. 
I don't have a manual pastry blender or an electric pastry blender. Uh, of course, it really makes you think about, you know, what you've got in life. I might just use my hands. They're clean. You do that. You know, I've washed them 17 oh, times in the past hour. Oh, you do wash them. Do you know what? We've forgotten the sugar. <laughs> and a quarter cup of sugar. You folks at home, does this terrify you? So uh, beat one egg and add enough milk to make two thirds of a cup of liquid. All right, no, this is gonna take some working out. Give me a second. Measuring jug. One third of a cup of water, two thirds of a cup of water. And that is 100, right. 150 okay. milliliters. Just to be um, clear, I'm using goat's milk. I think it's important that everyone at home knows that. We add the liquid to the dry ingredients and stir gently with a fork. Are you being gentle? Remember to be gentle. It's the only way I know how. Look at mine, God, I've done it, it's finished. You've got a ball. Just sludge. It's so sticky, look. Do you know what the problem is? You've used Trex and I've used margarine. Well, I wouldn't want to be smug. John's was supposed to look like this. Oh I'll just keep adding flour to it until I run out of flour. Which I have, that's it. Right? That's, I've run out. That's better. Yeah. Get your hands in that now. Ha 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 ha! Roll your dough out till about a quarter inch thickness. And if you don't know how much a quarter inch is, ask your husband. Let's see what yours looks like. Yeah, there you see. You see? Start cutting them out and put them on a baking tray. I think I've made mine too small. Look how small they are. They're like bottle caps. Exactly. Okay, so I have got 1, 2, 3, 14, 17, 18, 19, 20. <laughs> so we're gonna whack them in the oven. For 15 minutes. I'm gonna put the kettle on. Same. Right, I'm, I'm removing mine because they're burning. It's been 10 minutes. Yeah, but mine are tiny. I'm gonna take them out now. Ah! Presentation, right? Your man Vincent Price says, they are at their very best served fresh from the oven with the butter just melting inside them. Yeah. Because mine are so small, I might do this. It's a storm, but it's also a sandwich. Oh, sorry, I've just ate them. Haha, <laughs> no! Oh dear. It tastes like salt. Does it? It's fine, it's fine. It's a little bit salty. This is my own bottle for listening to you. Today's dish will be paired with tea. Or a quarantini or a quarantini if you want, and the Vincent Price horror film, Mask of the Red Death. About a group of elite rich people who during a plague decide to isolate themselves away from everyone else so that they won't catch it. Spoilers, everyone dies. Don't forget, today's recipe is brought to you by John McNee's Doom Cabaret, my new collection of short and deeply disturbing horror stories from Sinister Horror Company. Link in the description below. That's all for today. Thanks to my wonderful guest, Amal Palin, for joining me on this quarantine special. Don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe, and do please join me again next time for another recipe for nightmares. Yeah, get Andy's opinion. What does Andy think? Andy? Andy! Andy! Andy, come on! Andy! Well, what do you think? Oh, yeah, it's a scone, is it? <laughs> he said, it's not really a scone, is it? Oh, he'll eat them, though. Oh, well, good. <laughs> Job done.